am Jacqueline Jones, your host of Promising Me Unleashed. Today, I have with us Mr. Carlos Archer. Now, let me just first level set this conversation today. We know that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. He is not currently dealing with breast cancer, but he is dealing with and winning while in the process of undergoing treatment for another type of cancer that we want to bring to your attention. But today's conversation is all about winning. We are going to win. And as he continues his treatment, even now, we're all just gonna rally around Carlos and make sure that he knows he has a support system that is at the ready to support him either in prayer or learning more about the cancer that he is dealing with and also learning from him as he talks about what he is doing to maintain his health. So Carlos, thank you so much for joining us today on Promising Me Unleashed. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. I, and listen, and those are not just mere words. When we say we're happy to be here, we're happy to be here to talk. We're happy to be in the land of the living. And we're just happy. 100%. Isn't that right? We're happy just to be present. So I thought, Carlos, this month would be wonderful uh, just for you to share more about your condition. First of all, I've known you for a little bit. You are mm -hmm. the deep son of a sweet sister. And when I learned hey. about your condition, I knew, you know, this is somebody I got to rally around. And even as we've talked, uh, kind of like offline, um, you're just a wonderful person to know and an inspiration even um, for someone who is currently undergoing um, this type of cancer. So feel free, explain to us what it is when you were um, uh, made aware um, that you had the diagnosis and even talk a little bit about how you felt when you heard that news. Okay, um, starting from the beginning, um, for a couple months, I had like a, a lump under my arm, like my armpit area. <clears throat> and you know, sometimes you may think it's like a, a bug bite or some type of ingrown hair or something. I didn't really think too much of it. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, it grew a little bigger and um, I noticed that um, I was kind of having some unusual symptoms, mm -hmm. but long story short, when I went into the emergency room and after a few <clears throat> visits, they did a couple of tests and they basically told me like my white blood cells and other things were very low. Mm -hmm. So um, they did a biopsy and they took some tissue out of the, the lump under my armpit and they tested it. And that's when I found out I had a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma which is a, a blood cancer similar to like leukemia or, you know, other blood cancers. And it starts in your lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you break down the word like lymphoma, you know, mm -hmm. lymphatic lymphoma. So your immune system is your lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. Your immune system comes from your lymph nodes. So mm -hmm. your liver, which uh, regulates like most of the chemical levels in the blood. Um, that also excretes like bile. That's what your liver does. Uh, your kidneys, you know, remove waste and like extra fluid from your body. Mm -hmm. um, and they also remove like acid from your body as well. And they kind of watch the, the balance of water and salts and all of that in your blood. Mm -hmm. And then your spleen, um, which is very, 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 very important. Mm -hmm. That's where like uh, the infection fighting white blood cells are, are produced. That's the factory they're produced in and explain um, like your platelets, uh, real blood cells and all of that. Your spleen filters your blood and all of that. And what it does is it'll take out old blood cells and damaged blood cells and put them into your, you know, your body while new blood cells are being created throughout mm -hmm. your body. So again, we think like, oh, you know, immune system, immune system, immune system. Let me drink some tea because I got a cold or let me do this and honey. But if you go a step back further, you'll notice that if your lymphatic system isn't together, then of course your immune system won't be because that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So with me putting two and two together, having lymphoma, I realized my lymphatic system wasn't together. And then after the scans and things came back, uh, my highest concentration of lymphoma were in my kidney liver areas. 
Mm-hmm. So that enabled me to be like, ah, oh, okay. And then I started reading up on stress hormones and things like that, which mm-hmm. are also made in, in, in your uh, lymphatic system. Mm-hmm. So your body needs to be, you know, operating rested, healthy, full of vitamins, antioxidants, and, and nutrients for it to be operating at its optimal level. But if you're stressed out and working a lot, staying up late, not eating right, you'll be, you know, in the negatives. Mm -hmm. So after me tracing like my last 12 years back, I realized I've been in a constant state of uh, a tapped out immune system, but I've Mm -hmm. still been living life going forward. And now that I look up and I, and I chronicle all of those things that have happened in those uh, 12, 13 years, I understand now while my lymphatic system was so burnt out and how I got into the position of lymphoma, in my opinion. I'm not a doctor. They haven't proven where it came from. But mm-hmm. in my heart, I believe it was how burnt out and how stressed out my immune system was. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I was kind of taken a, a breath by it because when you hear things like that, when it comes to other people, you're, you know, you're like, wow, oh my God. But when it happens to you, it's like, it kind of makes you pause for a second because you're like, no, wait, he didn't say what I thought he said. Yes. So after, you know, yeah. So after that sets in, you kind of start to uh, just try to think about developing some type of plan on how you're going to get through it. You know, just being positive. And of course, at first, you, you don't really know what to do because it's a new experience. Mm-hmm. But um, I guess compartmentalizing things kind of makes it a little easier obviously God you know nothing is possible without him so just having someone to lean on and exhaust their strength with strength that I didn't have um made things a lot more easier to get through Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah for sure that's awesome. So um, take us on a little bit of the journey, because when you said uh, how it felt when you initially found out, that was how it was for me for, uh, you know, not even thinking that I had breast cancer. I mean, somebody who stayed on top of her mammograms and made sure I went to the doctors. I wasn't neglectful, um, but there were certain stressors that were happening in life. And sometimes those things can impact what goes on on the inside of our bodies. I'm not blaming it on that, but just the initial um, uh, being informed initially of having cancer in and of itself brings on a whole different level of how you deal with it. So um, just talk to us a little bit about the journey once you found out what steps uh, did you follow from that point forward? So I think um, with anyone, like I stated earlier, it, it's a little bit of denial at first. Mm-hmm. And then when you accept that this is what it is and you start kind of working on a plan, it's kind of like, like rolling the like dice because mm-hmm. you're kind of just trying to figure out what works at the moment and how long it's going to work, this and that. So I'm um, just getting closer to God, becoming, uh, and I've always been a spiritual person. I've always been in the word. Um, but of course, you know, you cling to God a little bit more when you're going through trials and tribulations. So that was one thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, being more aware of myself and my stresses, because at 35, you know, I really shouldn't have a whole bunch of stresses, but life happens. Mm-hmm. And when you're not aware of those stresses, you continually live in those stresses for years and years and years. And then you don't realize that you've been in a fight or flight mode and not a mode of healing or mm-hmm. a mode of rest or a mode of peace. And that's mm-hmm. important because if you're always fighting, your body cannot focus on being at its best, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I started uh, meditating a lot more, just doing yoga, exercising. Um, just trying to kind of do a little bit of everything that would either bring me peace or some type of joy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm very much in the sports, so I still keep up with sports. Um, I really enjoy reading. I read a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always suggest people would get some type of electronic gaming because that allows you to take yourself out of the real world for a few hours. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, be Super Mario or Batman or whoever mm-hmm. you want to be. You know, and forget that you're that person with cancer at the moment, you know, and that's very much important because if, you know, sometimes you'll wake up and look in the mirror and just 
think that the diagnosis is who you are. Right. But the important thing is telling yourself like, this is what my body is dealing with, but this is not me. And this yes. is not who God is going to make me. And this is not who I'm going to become. And as long as you focus on who you want to be and where you want to go and you manifest that through the power of the most high, you'll be exactly where you want to be. So I tell myself every day, I'm going to be the healthiest version of myself mm -hmm. and absolute health. And I'm going to be disease free because mm -hmm. that's what I intend to do. So mm -hmm. I know what the doctors say and PET scans say sometimes, but I realize that they don't have the last say. So at the end of the day, as long as I'm focused and it's hard, we're human, you mm -hmm. know, we get discouraged, all of the above. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, you just kind of got to reset, go back to your basis. And that's that's probably been the, the biggest thing to cling to, just yeah. God himself. Yeah. I wanted to ask you uh, about the treatment because you have mm -hmm. on some major uh, treatments, some very costly treatments um, at probably one of the most world-renowned institutions yeah. in yeah. the world. So talk to me um, just to, or talk to our viewers, just a little bit about what that process looked like. Okay. Um, initially, I was supposed to do six rounds of chemotherapy and I was supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it was called R-CHOP. So I did four rounds mm -hmm. and things were looking good. But when they did the PET scan, they noticed that some of it that came back in some different places mm -hmm. and some of it that grew after the first couple initial uh, sessions. Mm -hmm. Later on, they found out that part of it, uh, I think it's called SNS, it's like secondary neuro something. Mm -hmm. But I ended up getting, a, there was a light on my skin and my brain from lymphoma and it was on my pituitary gland. Mm -hmm. So I ended up, to a certain degree, having brain cancer as well. Mm. So I went from our shop to a couple other different methods. Mm -hmm. And um, they have really funny names like Rice, mm -hmm. Matrix, mm -hmm. Ice, and, you know, PBR. So they basically put me on this trial called the, uh, is, it, is it the Marietta trial or the Henry? It was the Marietta trials. And it was a certain program that was supposed to help eliminate uh, the brain part. So that actually worked did well. Um, and then following my PET scan, I was, you know, in remission and things of that nature, which was great, but it ended up coming back again in my kidney, spleen, liver areas. And, um, so I had to go back and what they did was they recommended me to get a stem cell transplant. Mm -hmm. So last year I got diagnosed February, 2021, and I had my stem cell transplant this year, January 28th, 2022. Wow. Um, so, and a lot of people aren't really familiar with stem cells are, and I wasn't really either. Mm -hmm. But um, stem cells are basically where your whole body and everything that they come from within your stem cells. So your hair, uh, your fingernails, how tall your bone structure, like all of that stuff is the DNA and the code is written in those stem cells. Mm -hmm. So certain stem cells grow hair, certain stem cells help you grow muscle, certain stem cells help you grow ligaments, et cetera, et cetera. Some people have to get other people's stem cells because their body can't create or make enough for this process. Mm -hmm. But thanks to, you know, the glory of the most high, I was able to use my own uh, stem cells. So they collected from me. Wow. Um, there's two different ones. I think it's a autologous and it's a, a, a autonomous. There are two different names that I always forget, <laughs> but um, yeah, scientific doctor <laughs> names. <laughs> so I ended up uh, using my stem cells and what they do is they give you high dose chemotherapy before your stem cell treatment, mm -hmm. basically because since you're starting from scratch, be that's how bad the chemo is, your stem cells are needed to bring you back to at least some type of being able to heal or your body might not be able to recover. Mm -hmm. so when you get a stem cell transplant you're basically like a newborn baby mm -hmm. and, um, you can't be around nobody you can't go nowhere um you gotta wash your hands 30 times a day you're, you're like bubble boy <laughs> so <laughs> so i dealt with that for about eight weeks mm -hmm. um 
and I was in remission and this is in January. And then about July, August, it, some of my uh, lymphoma came back. Uh, they said it's a, an occurrence that happens often with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Mm. So that happened and um, they had recommended that my plan B was a CAR T transplant. Mm. So that's what my body's, uh, they're getting ready for me to do in the next couple of weeks. Okay. CAR T therapy is similar uh, to, to a stem cell transplant, but what they do is uh, they have the centrifuge machine they put a line in your neck and it collects your blood, do all, does all of that. And um, it separates by weight, uh, your platelets, your hemoglobin, white blood cells, T cells, and other things. Mm-hmm. And then they give you everything else back while uh, the bag is filling up with your T cells. Mm-hmm. So it's called CAR T therapy because CAR T stands for chimeric antigen receptor. Uh-huh. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so it's called CAR T in short. Um, mm-hmm. But what they do is they engineer those cells to search for cancerous cells. Mm-hmm. And they're basically like your own, they're your own white T cells on mm-hmm. steroids, just super ready. Mm-hmm. So, ready to you know, get those bad cells, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. From, so they, they send in the Navy cells or the, the Rangers or whatever. That's right. And That's it's a, the troops. It's, yeah, <laughs> right. And now they're supposed to hunt down. Because mm-hmm. cancer cells, as you know, they get sneaky. They hide up in bone marrow. They hide in healthy cells. And they try mm-hmm. to dodge, you know, the, the, the medicine coming their way because they're smart. So mm-hmm. these are supposed to actually be able to outsmart them and, mm-hmm. and help eliminate them with uh, just their own T-cell blend that they've been putting in the doctors, uh, in the lab. So right. that takes about three weeks. And then they send me my, my T-cells back. And I'll go to the hospital, get some more chemotherapy, and then it'll be my T cell infusion. And I'll probably be back in the hospital for about seven days so they can monitor me, temperature, things like that. Because while cancer cells are dying in your body, you know, it, it causes reactions because it's mm-hmm. poison, basically. Right. So, so, you know, they just want to be careful and watch me for that. But that's pretty much how the journey has been, just a bunch of different chemo methods, trying to see what works. Mm-hmm. and uh, then the stem cell transplant and now we got CAR-T therapy so mm-hmm. I'm very excited um, with the CAR-T therapy though I, and listen I just sitting here listening to you first of all you took us to school medical school <laughs> um, nah. because those <laughs> those terms and things but you know what that's part of the um, uh, personal uh, knowledge that you really need to have as a patient yeah. you can't be afraid I think that's one of the things that um, you know, because fear is the first thing that kind of hits you when you get a cancer diagnosis or may- maybe any diagnosis. Man. Fear comes to rob you, um, e- even more so than the cancer itself, it comes to rob you. And when you have more knowledge of your condition, you are better able to manage it. Carlos, we're talking about winning, right? Um, and you're going through this process, but you are yet still winning. Talk a little bit about what you're doing now, um, you know, while you're waiting for the doctors to um, do what they need to do to prepare you for this CAR T therapy. What are some of the things that you're doing now personally for your health? Um, you mentioned winning, and that's a very that's a very big part of my life because I feel like there's wins and defeats. I mm-hmm. feel like wins go with losses. And mm-hmm. I feel like we all winners at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I really feel like just being in the right mental space, mm-hmm. that's the most important because you could be eating right and doing all of this. But if you're not in the right mental space and you're on the inner turmoil, got all this going on on the inside, mm-hmm. you're never going to be fully at peace. And um, I think you need to say that again. You know. If you're not winning in your mind, because it comes down yeah. to decision, right? You 100%. know, you, you know your state, you know it's cancer, you're not in denial, but you make the decision in your mind to say, I am going to win with the right help. I'm going to mm-hmm. win. You know, that's a combination of your faith in God and the physician. You know, I think he gave them the knowledge to be able to treat some of these conditions that we're being uh, plagued by. And we have to use that wisdom. But in the process of doing that, 
you have to make a decision up in your own mind that you're going to win. Um, and I think that's the first point. You're right. And we're going to talk a little bit about this eating uh, journey and some of the other methods that are available to us um, in order for us to see ourselves healthy, even while we're going through tra- treatment and definitely after treatment, after we've gone through and come through, we still need to keep doing some things that we should be doing. So talk about that. We talked about the mind. Let's talk a little bit about the body. What are you doing now? First of all, I've seen you and you look like a picture of health and anybody, you probably can't see him. <laughs> Thank real good. you. You probably I, can't see him real good right here, that. but I'm going to tell you this boy's skin, excuse me, this young man, this young man's skin and his hair is just absolutely beautiful. So what are you doing now to kind of keep yourself um, healthy, physically healthy? In all honesty, um, I've tried to eat mainly Um, plant-based and just like a lot of water Mm -hmm. cleanse. Um, And like I was explaining before, you know, sometimes we're so go, 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 we kind of like forget sometimes, but you know, the way that our body is set up, and even in the Bible, it tells us, you can kind of tell God wants us to primarily eat vegetables and fruits, you mm-hmm. know? And um, I was having a discussion yesterday. If you notice, like, a lion in the jungle has claws and teeth that can rip things to shred and eat them right then and there. The human body isn't really m- meant to go grab a chicken and eat it on the spot. We got to take it home, cut it up, wash it, and cook it. Mm-hmm. You can go grab an apple off of a tree and eat it, though, and keep going about your business. Mm -hmm. So it's the reason why we're built like this. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to lymphoma and even a lot of cancers, a lot of people don't take into consideration, or even people that don't have any type of health issue, that Mm -hmm. our blood is is our oil, like a vehicle. And if your your oil isn't right, then your vehicle is going to run weird, Mm -hmm. just like the human body. So as we, you know, go about life, we have to cleanse our lymphatic system and Mm -hmm. our blood as well. And a lot of us really don't because, you know, you wake up, stop at Starbucks and go to McDonald's to get an egg McMuffin. But we do have to increase the spinach intake and we do have to increase juicing, things like that. So I actually try to juice a few times a week, whether it be celery or wheatgrass or just cucumbers, because um, I love smoothies and things of that nature as well. But, you know, a lot of people haven't uh, haven't didn't really understand the dynamic. Because I just found this out maybe like a year or two ago also. But when you juice, it's easier for your body to absorb the nutrients in the plants. Mm -hmm. Um, So I learned about juicing because when I had my intestinal surgery uh, during the cancer, some of the cancer about last year, I couldn't eat solid food for Mm -hmm. for about three weeks. Mm -hmm. So I had to, um, I was just juicing a lot, juicing a lot, carrots and celery and wheatgrass and apples and, and this and that because I still was trying to get those nutrients. So and they just said, in general. Yeah, they said that juicing, excuse me, um, um, mm-hmm. when you juice, it's easier for your body to break down. The chewing mm-hmm. of, of even raw uh, fruits and vegetables, um, they do the same because the skin and things off of that are nutritious. But when you're going through a battle like cancer, you want, don't want your body to overwork itself. Um, right. and breaking down food. So juicing, it has been, you know, one of the um, things that will help your body absorb those nutrients a lot faster. I, I just learned that as well after going yeah. through, uh, breast cancer um, treatment and during that process, that juicing really, really helped me until I could fully eat, you know, the heartier um, mm-hmm. food or vegetables right. itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nah, juicing is, is, is wonderful. And I also found out that when you juice, it eliminates the fiber. And a lot of the times the fiber is kind of what be shredding that stuff up in your stomach, which Mm -hmm. is good. But in my condition, my intestines were very sensitive, so I didn't need the fiber. So it was just perfect. But um, I think juicing um, and and like you said, trying to take care of myself, eating better and regular exercise and drinking water. I think those are the main components. You know, because I still eat meat from time to time and I still like chicken and I had salmon the other day, Mm -hmm. but I try not to eat meat with every single meal. I try not to eat a big old carb or big old starch like white rice with every single meal because Mm -hmm. those things turn into sugar. Starch Mm -hmm. is turning into sugar, bread turning into sugar, yeast, all that stuff, alcohol turns into sugar. 
Mm-hmm. And, and we know about glucose, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. how glucose, mm-hmm. you know, has an impact on cancer. Um, mm-hmm. And so we need to be more cognizant of those things um, that we're taking in, especially those white processed uh, mm-hmm. foods. Yeah, that white processed stuff doesn't help us any. Yeah, so uh, what mm-hmm. else are some of the things that you're doing um, to kind of help with that, that whole health uh, process? Well, as far as that, um, my diet, dealing with the cancer situation, chemo, uh, not being able to sleep, headaches, nausea, mm-hmm. you're aware of all of the things. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, work, I, I work at a medical dispensary, so I also use cannabis as well to mm-hmm. kind of help with a lot of those symptoms that I've been dealing with. Um, I've been in the industry for about, maybe about five or six years at this point. Um, I, I started when I was in the state of Michigan, just kind of learning, um, dealing with patients and some of the ailments that they went through. And being a patient myself, it was a kind of not not like a catch-22, but it was nice to have the perspective of a patient first before I actually learned about the medicinal properties of mm-hmm. just cannabis, JC, CBD, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I want you to, because, um, you know, many of us are uh, ignorant, and I say that with all due respect. Um, And I don't know a lot about the cannabis world. (laughs) You know, we know about how they legalize marijuana for, um, you know, I don't even know for just medicinal purposes. But but I do believe that there is an education that is needed and an awareness um, so that we aren't ignorant to what is going on and that people can make informed decisions about what is going to be most beneficial for them, especially when they're going through a cancer diagnosis. We give people morphine for comfort when situations are really, really dire and pain is really, really bad. Um, And so there are things that people are getting um, that are are chemically produced um, drugs, if you will, to support some of the things that... um, that physicians use to treat patients. But we also know that there are some natural things that were put on the earth and when used properly, they can really benefit us. So let's talk a little bit about about that. Okay, so I always like, because I know sometimes it can be taboo and this and that. So first off, I don't do drugs. I use medicinal cannabis. So Mm -hmm. that's the distinction. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I always like to tell patients like, no, it's not drugs. I mean, I guess maybe technically I, you could you could qualify it as that. But do you qualify broccoli as a drug? Do you qualify lavender as a drug? Mm-hmm. So these are natural compounds that are grown outside in your backyard. Um, obviously, God put everything on this earth for us. And our food is our medicine starting there. You know, obviously, I could be here all day and talk about biblical scripture, mm-hmm. how cannabis was found in Solomon's grave when they found him, et cetera, et cetera. But we'll be here talking all day. Let's <laughs> fast forward to like 1965. Yeah. Because, you know, they've been using cannabis and Hindu temples, Jewish for years, like years, decades, centuries. Mm-hmm. But um, let's fast forward to today. Uh, a lot of the older generation is used to the whole, you know, party, stoner vibe, 60s, 70s. What's up, Cool Breeze, Panama Red, Acapulco Gold? Mm-hmm. You kind of only really knew about the fun recreational parts of cannabis and smoking a joint. Mm-hmm. Fast forward till today. Studies have been done in Venezuela and Israel, all over the U.S. Because there are over 150 different compounds mm-hmm. in the cannabis plant. Some of those compounds kill cancer. Mm-hmm. Some of those compounds uh, eliminate pain, help with anxiety, um, ovarian issues, cervical cancer issues, fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, even if you're dealing with, you know, dementia, Alzheimer's, cannabis also helps with that. A lot of public speakers use cannabis before they speak because it allows them to be more centered, calmer. So. These are a lot of medicinal benefits that are just starting to come out. Mm-hmm. Um, me speaking as a in two two different two different lights. One as a patient who has like severe eczema, um, 
That's kind of how I got tall, But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I started going to the dispensary when I was living in the state of Michigan. And they had this big old vet and it was a medicated cocoa butter, vitamin E, and like shea butter mm-hmm. all together. Um, my skin was like cracked and bleeding. Like that's how bad it would be to the point where I would have to walk like this because just mm-hmm. doing that would make my skin crack. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would shower and I would slather myself down with the medicated and I noticed my skin started to heal faster mm-hmm. than when I was just using regular cocoa butter or mm-hmm. when I was using regular coconut oil. Mm-hmm. And I started to feel better and the pain started to lessen. And then I started looking up. THC helps eliminate fungal issues on top of your skin, along mm-hmm. with shea butter and those things, which are natural compounds as well. And so you just start to put two and two together. And obviously, you know, I'm I won't I'm 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 on here to be honest. So mm-hmm. I do use cannabis in a recreational manner as well because I deal with depression and anxiety and those things like that. But I also don't consider that recreation. I still consider myself treating an ailment. Because mm-hmm. some people trade trapadone every day for their depression. I don't have to do that. I can take a couple of drops of tincture. I can uh, maybe take some RSO or maybe eat something versus mm-hmm. having to pop a pill every four hours, which is something that I don't want to do because mm-hmm. there are things made in lab that I can't read or pronounce and I don't even know what they are. Mm-hmm. But me and you could both take some seeds in our backyard and go water a plant. Mm-hmm. So that to me is a distinction. Like, if you were going to eat apples every day, I don't know, why not grow an apple tree? Mm-hmm. Same way we go to Safeway. And, you know, so I feel I feel that way about cannabis. Mm-hmm. You definitely want to make the disclaimer that we're not condoning what people do in that cannabis realm, um, how people choose to make decisions regarding their health. But this one thing I do know, <laughs> whatever you take, if God doesn't purify it and make it so that it edifies us on any level, be it a prescription uh, pill, be it any other form of medical treatment, uh, if he is not engaged in that process, we're doomed, if you will. Um, and so it's, but it's important. And as I said, you've taken us to medical school on, on several levels, because these are things that we need to know. Once we know, then we can make informed decisions. And it's important for us to know what's out here, what's available to us. Like you, and I'm sure um, even after you get through this journey, you're not looking to take a whole bunch of over-the-counter medications to, to, to continue your health journey. And I know how important food, just what comes from the ground, how important that is to your health. The power of plant-based nutrition, the power of herbs, the power of mm-hmm. understanding what, you know, we talk about mushrooms. There's certain mushrooms you can't go out in your yard and just pluck up and eat. Some of them are poisonous. Yeah. But there's mushrooms that aren't poisonous. And those are benefit. Now, I don't eat mushrooms. Let me just put that out there right now. I don't. I I, love them. I eat them. If I eat them, it's by accident or they're just in the food that I'm making. But I wanted to make that (laughs) distinction that everything God gave us from the ground, um, he he said it was good for us. Mm -hmm. He made it very clear. And we know how to, we need to know how to utilize those things. So when we talk about the, the medical purposes of, of cannabis and TSC. I'm still researching. No, I'm not going to go out here and start using anything. Let me make that very clear. But I am going to learn and I'm going to find out what is going to be beneficial for me as I continue my health journey. Because there is a journey um, that you continue on as a cancer patient. And Carlos, you know full well what this journey looks like now as you continue to um, receive the treatment that you receive, you know what it's going to be like to continue to win and do what you need to do to continue to improve your health. So before we go, first of all, I wanted to say thank you, Carlos, so much for sharing not just your journey, but taking us on an educational walk as to Always. how you are getting through um, your treatment. You are winning right now. Amen. You are winning. Every day you roll over and you wake up, you are winning. And I want Amen. people to know that you are an example of what it looks like to win while you're in the process of your journey. What advice can you give or share with our audience 
that will help them also to know that they can also win? I have maybe two pieces of advice. One, temporary is not forever. It's gonna start raining at some point. And two, don't forget how important self-care is. And briefly, just trying to touch on it, we know in our community, therapy isn't always, uh, you know, Say thought it. of, and it's, it's it. I'm it's fine. taboo in many, but you don't taboo. have to be kind here. Say it. <laughs> yeah. So I definitely feel like a lot of us need to talk to someone, even if you don't have a cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. I think we all need, there's nothing wrong with additional tools to have in, in your toolbox. And I think that we should be a lot more open to therapy because this is my first year doing therapy and it changed my life. Mm -hmm. And every tool that I believe that we use in order to fight our battles, we have a responsibility to share that tool with someone else. So Carlos, I thank you so much for coming fully loaded. You came with a fork, knife, and a spoon. <laughs> thank you so much for having me on your show. I appreciate you coming on. Carlos, we're going to have you come on again um, because we want to hear more uh, after you've come through this next uh, series of treatment. Um, and just for you to continue to share with us and encourage audiences everywhere. I know at some point you're going to be writing a little something, I believe, um, but sharing the story because this is a journey that I think men and women of all ages need to hear. You are a young man and you are winning. So I want to thank you so much for joining us here today on Promising Me Unleashed, and we look forward to having you come back again. Thank you again, and um, I'm humbled to be here, and I appreciate everything. I hope I was able to be a blessing for other people. That's all. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much.